Every August since 1982, people from all walks of life with one common interest have descended upon a small mountain town deep in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado during the start of their rainy season to celebrate one of Earth's oldest life forms, mushrooms. Yes, fungus can have the power to unite everyone from college professors and mycologists to hippies and regular Joes with nine to five jobs. One word describes them all, mycophile. Mycophile is a person with a strange attraction to mushrooms and fungus, especially foraging wild edible mushrooms, a devotee of mushrooms if you will, or someone who studies mushrooms as a hobby. And if you're not one of them, you just might not understand the attraction. Once the fungus obsession is ignited in someone, it rarely ever goes away. Some of these people will make the trek from their respective homes and communities to the beautiful skiing village of Telluride, Colorado to spend four days with their people at the Telluride Mushroom Festival in August. Me, being the mycophile and mushroom nerd that I am, not to mention being the vice president of the local mycological society, my wife and I decided that we would make the 1300 mile journey from near Seattle, Washington to Telluride, Colorado by car and I decided to document the whole thing. Please come along on a journey into the rainy Rocky Mountains into a veritable mushroom wonderland. We embark on the journey from near Seattle, Washington in a small town called Port Orchard, across the Cascade Mountain into the dry, arid reaches of Eastern Oregon. All right, so we arrived at our campsite here. Uh, this is Farewell Bend State Park, the first night of our journey to Telluride. And uh, it's 104 degrees right now. And this is basically a desert. And if you look right behind me, there's the, the Snake River. And just beyond that, those hills, that's actually Idaho. Right now I'm sitting in Oregon. And so it's six o'clock at night and 104 degrees and very little shade out here. And uh, we were hoping to jump in the river and the Snake River is right behind me. And it's really, really low on water and uh, it's pretty filthy looking. So I don't think we're gonna go swimming in that. So we're basically gonna try to like hide out in the shade for the next couple hours. Don't think there's much mushroom picking out here. So in the, uh, in the desert of Northeastern Oregon, so yeah. All right, so the sun has set here at uh, Farewell Bend State Park. Beautiful night, waiting for the stars to come out. So hoping to take some pretty pictures of the stars, get a good night of sleep, and then hit the road for Salt Lake City first thing in the morning. So let's hope that these stars uh, put on a good show tonight. The astrophotography did not disappoint that night. These photos are 30 second exposures taken with my Canon EOS R on a wide angle lens. When you're hundreds of miles from any main city, the stars shine brighter than anywhere else. Alright, so we're waking up here on day two at Farewell Bend State Park in Oregon. So I'm a little underslept, but I got the coffee cooking. We're gonna hit the road for Salt Lake City today on our way to Telluride. So come on, let's keep going on the journey. So we came to the Great Salt Lake, it's about 100 degrees and again no mushrooms found anywhere around here so we're going to continue on to Telluride. <laughs> what do you think of this place? <laughs> Pretty different. All right, 
so I'm at this swanky little joint here in Salt Lake City called Eight Settlers Distillery. Finally found some mushrooms, first mushrooms of the trip. Actually, they're, uh, they're truffle fries, so they're probably not real truffles, just truffle oil, but still tasty. I do like this painting above the fireplace. Look at this old guy with his uh, truffle pigs and his truffle basket, so can appreciate that. And this is a elk and bison and wagyu burger. So shout out to the Eight Settlers Distillery here in uh, beautiful Salt Lake City. So today we had a long drive, long day on the road from Farewell Bend, Oregon, all the way to Salt Lake City. Had a killer dinner, and we're gonna go crash out. Get ready for our drive for Telluride in the morning. All right, waking up here in a Cottonwood district of uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, we're gonna get on the road today, leaving from Salt Lake City, heading to Telluride, Colorado. About a six hour drive, hopefully a much more scenic drive today. So we just got done driving through the canyons of Highway 15 near Price, Utah uh, on the way to Telluride. This is like one of the coolest uh, stretches of this drive so far. So we're enjoying today's drive much, much better. We finally crossed the state line into beautiful or colorful Colorado. Apparently we're about an hour from Telluride, so cool. We're gonna keep on pushing. But we're taking these back roads that wind through these crazy canyons here on the Utah, Colorado border. Very beautiful drive. Welcome to Telluride. Telluride, Colorado is a former Victorian mining town whose main exports were silver, gold, zinc, copper, and lead. It also boasts the title of the first city in the world to have electric street lights, although this may be disputed by some. All right, we made it to Telluride. We just got to the hotel Telluride, and uh, I guess we're gonna go walk around the town. Come with us. Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for sure. Hit that thumbs up button and leave a positive comment. Telluride now attracts people mainly for skiing, hiking, and sightseeing. Walking up the street trying to find this mushroom festival, so let's go see what's going on up here. Wilson Peak, one of the 14,000 foot plus peaks seen from the city, is actually on the side of Coors Beer Camp. The town is just eight blocks wide and 12 blocks long. When talking about Telluride, it would be an incomplete story to not talk about the dogs. We noticed right away that the town's people love dogs and they're welcome almost everywhere. I was a little disappointed my dog Gunner didn't come along with us. We ended up at a nice restaurant called The Wood Ear. We're at this super swanky little joint called The Wood Ear. And look on this wall, it's got like grizzly bears, but it's got mushrooms and big chanterelles growing over there. Embodying the spirit of mushrooms. After an awesome dinner at the Wood Ear, a restaurant I would recommend highly, we headed over to the Palm Theater at the local high school. 
Britt Bunyard was the MC and he was introducing Louis Schwartzberg, where Louis himself came up to introduce his new movie premiere, Gratitude Revealed. It was an awesome start to the weekend to see his film. Right now I'm gonna go down to the gondola. It's almost 10 o'clock tonight. I'm gonna meet Alan Rockefeller and some other people. We're gonna ride this gondola way up the hill into the mountains and uh, go uh, foraging mushrooms with black lights. The bottom of the free gondola, one of Telluride's awesome features. A free gondola that takes you to the top of the mountain. The gondola runs till midnight. That's where I met with Alan Rockefeller, a famous mycologist. Alan Rockefeller is known worldwide for his studies in mycology and his citizen science. We're here with Alan Rockefeller. How you doing, Alan? Hi, I'm doing well. Good. So what are we going to be doing here tonight in Telluride, Colorado? Black light mushroom for it. We're going to ride this gondola. Up to and, the top uh, and then look for mushrooms up there. Do you know where some mushrooms are right now? Or I went up we there just... last night, so they're probably still there, the ones we saw. Okay. Got a little idea what we're doing. Sweet. Well, thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. And uh, let's go check out what's up on the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from the dim glow of the city lights below, the gondola ride was extremely dark. We piled out of the gondola and the crowd kind of chased Alan around in the pitch black, dodging steep cliffs. It was quite dangerous and honestly kind of hard to keep up with Alan. He's a fast walker. As he shined his 365 nanometer UV light around, he was looking for anything that showed fluorescence underneath the black light. We found a species of Russula that had really bright fluorescing yellow gills. The crowd gathered around to look at different lichens and mushrooms underneath the UV light, which emitted quite a beautiful light. We ran across some equisetum or horsetail, which fluoresced pretty bright underneath the black lights. Art Good Times joined us at the top of the hill. He's one of the original founders of the festival. Well, thanks for the walk in the woods. And yeah, you're welcome. We definitely saw some cool stuff, and I would love to go on another black light foray soon. It was time to head back for the hotel and hit the hay. Looks like some storm clouds moving in over town, so it could get interesting. In the center of Elks Park, right in the heart of the Mushroom Festival, were the identification tables. It was pretty amazing to see over 200 species of mushrooms foraged in the forests right here around Telluride in the middle of August. As big as your head. That is a puffball. <laughs> Telluride has quaint little boutiques, fancy restaurants, historic hotels, parks, trails, and more. It is even home to the annual Telluride Film Festival on Labor Day weekend. Alright, we're out here Friday morning of the festival. Just got our wristbands. $400 a ticket. So. Yeah, don't have sticker shock if you're going to get a ticket to the Telluride Mushroom Festival. It is expensive, but one of the perks, you get to ride this free gondola. Well, there are just mushrooms everywhere. Like they're just popping out of this hillside like crazy. I heard people saying there's mushrooms everywhere. I kind of thought that they might be exaggerating, but uh, no exaggeration, lots of mushrooms. After a beautiful ride up the free gondola here in Telluride, we met up with Larry Evans and a team of mushroom foragers at the top of the mountain. Larry Evans is known as Mr. Mushroom. He's really well known in the mycological world and a staple of the Telluride Mushroom Festival. He offered a foray on that Friday morning and we happened to join along with him. Yeah, he's the guy in the bare feet. I'm here with the great Larry Evans, Telluride, Colorado. And how many years have you been doing the Telluride Mushroom Festival? Since the 90s, late 90s. Doing different mushroom festivals in Colorado since the 90s. Started doing Telluride around the turn of the century. Still doing uh, more mushroom festivals in Colorado, doing some in Eagle. Then after this, we're going up to the uh, Alyssa Allen. Oh yeah, doing a Michael dying. Pigments, yeah. Gonna be I know doing Alyssa. dying up at our uh, Western Montana Mycological Association foray on Labor Day. Okay, very cool. And then uh, be going up to Sycamus, BC. And Beautiful. hope you, this is a foray you want to check out, man. That'd be cool. Uh, we go out, we pick uh, white and yellow chanterelles and lobsters and matsutake and psilocybin. And then we have a big uh, <laughs> band at night. It's a, it, it's a very party. good, very good party in, in Sycamus. 
And then uh, we're doing something with Alan Rockefeller and Graham Steinrich on the coast. Oh, the Oysterville. In October. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Going out uh, hunting psilocybin and, and I think we might be down there. Preparations for that. Well, awesome. I'm super honored to meet Larry, and uh, we're on a foray today in Telluride, so he's going to teach Show us a little him bit over about the edge. Show him over the edge where we're going to go now. Yeah, we're going to head down into the trees. Awesomeness. And Larry has <laughs> bare feet, so Straight we down. can't complain about hiking. So these are the wood ear mushrooms. You can see why they're called a wood ear. See that? They're pretty ge gelatinous. And I've never found these in the wild because they don't grow really in Western Washington. Pretty rare. Can you tell us a little about this? This guy, we found a bunch of these. Oh, good. Yep, yep, tree ears. Uh, okay, this is pretty common on on the uh, on our uh, spruce and fir or down logs here. Um, wood ear, right? A wood ear, good edible. Yep. Very tasty, and one of the few that you can eat raw. I've I've oh. uh, I got a bunch of them. Personally, survived on these raw for a couple of days with unintended bivouacs and things like that. Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's 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 something you can you can eat uh, raw, oh, wow. and cool. it definitely takes your appetite away. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm good. I'm good. So, there you go. Look at that. It looks like a gelatinous ear. Yeah. So the restaurant we ate at last night was named for these. Pretty neat. Now the trick is don't forget about them in this rain jacket. End up in the dryer. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Honey, there's mushrooms in the dryer again. You must have been picking mushrooms and putting them in your pockets. The the gomphidius and the swillus often grow together. You see this the the gomphidius has this distinctive yellow foot. This acts kind of like a filter for the swillus and the radioactivity that uh, the properties of accumulating radioactivity tend to accumulate with the the gomphidius and the again the mushroom will move all any heavy metal and contaminant like this to the front right it moves it to the front it pushes it into the primordia it pushes it into the spores it sends it out in the spores that's why you get 10 to 100 times uh, a bioaccumulation of heavy metals in puffballs so don't eat the puffballs down on the prairie down there <laughs> Oh, hey, Larry, this was awesome. Yeah. We're going to boogie down the mountain. We got to check out from our hotel. Right, right. I don't know if we'll see you again, but here, I'd like to give you this. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, oh, we'll have a, I'll have a shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I, cool. I need to be covered. Awesome. All right. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you again. Here, yeah. Thank you. All right, enjoyed it. Just gotta show this, like sign them, because they stand out so much. Here, you can really see it from a ways away. Yeah, that big guy. Beautiful. This is a Laxinum scabrum or the aspen bolete. So right here I found this beautiful orange capped mushroom. You can see it has like what look like little hairs. They're called scabers. But uh, these ones grow in association with these beautiful aspen trees. So this is known around here as the aspen bolete. You can see the margin, the edge of the cap is kind of rolled in a little bit and it's got really tight pores. It's like a beautiful sponge surface, like a boletus edulis or a porcini mushroom. But this one is in the genus Lexinum. Um, there's a lot of different species of these in Europe. They just eat these like they're going out of style, but uh, they're kind of a 50-50 shot if, uh, if you eat this, whether you're going to have a great time or have terrible diarrhea. So probably going to just avoid eating this one, but still beautiful. Lexinum confruis gabrum, or the aspen bolete.
Dude, so we just encountered a grizzly bear just like 50 feet off of the main trail. That was crazy. People were like, there's a big bear right there. And no doubt, it was a huge grizzly bear, so. Wow. That's Telluride for you, I guess. It's a Telluride moment. Telluride moments, yeah, that's the thing. We're, we're having them. Just got so lucky as to go on a foray with Larry Evans and meet him and talk about going to South America. Come across a grizzly bear on the trail. That happened to be friendly. That's what I'm, as long as it doesn't kill me, I'm gonna call it friendly. We're gonna leave the hotel, go set up camp, and then return to Telluride. We just found our camping spot. We left Hotel Telluride and we're at this dispersed camping site. And this is called Priest Lake. And yeah, right now it's raining and it's pretty muddy. I guess this happens pretty much every day. Thankfully, we came pretty prepared, so we're pretty comfy. Our tent's pretty comfy. Uh, but yeah, it's wet. So. We're gonna get on some hiking gear and I guess go hiking around the lake. Yep, that's thunder. This is Colorado in August. So. I believe these are the, uh, yeah, eh, looks like Tossaby. These guys are pretty poisonous from what I understand. Well, that's an agaricus. Look at that, flip that over. Look at that beautiful partial veil. Unbroken, very, very cool. Oh, we got a Russell of Breva peas and a Russell of Zarampolina growing right next to each other. Sure are a lot of different Russellas out here. Russellas, I mean. Russella. Sure may SMR. There you go. <laughs> Look at this big witch's hat. Hygrosabe. That's one of the bigger ones I've ever seen, honestly. That's huge waxy cap. Lycoperidon perlatum. The, the studded puffball. We're getting a little bit of everything on this trip. <laughs> From scorching heat to pouring rain. Oh yeah, that's creepy. Well, there's a bunch of animal poo in here. Look at this, it's like a Rushala Wonderland. They're just, they're everywhere. Hawk's wing or uh, Sarcodon. Wow, quite a flush of them. Look at how unique the cap surface is on these. Very cool, and what's even cooler is underneath it's gonna have these like teeth. Look at the teeth on that, like a hedgehog mushroom. Look at us, Hynosobes. More red rushalas and all these white mushrooms. Oh my gosh. And just a ton of like fairy rings everywhere. Fairy rings intersecting with other fairy rings. There's another sarcodon. Beautiful little mycena of the rushalas, but these ones really deep red, known as the sickener. Helvella. So the test. You know, might as well talk about it while we're here. He's got that rosy stem. You know, I almost want to say it's the shrimp rustler, but but the way to tell is you gotta take a little nibble. So, I'm gonna uh, just take a little bit off the edge of the cap. It's okay to chew on any mushroom as long as you spit it out. So I don't taste anything that tastes acrid about this. I think this is a good, safe one to eat. It looks delicious, right? Look how it is. Yeah, beautiful. Red, delicious apple, but you'll know if, if it's a rustler that you aren't supposed to be eating, it'll really start burning on your tongue. But uh, that one, yeah, it's been about 30 seconds. I would definitely be feeling it by now, so. We'll call these the Russella Zarampolina. 
The only problem with these is they get all those little holes or wormies. Color on this guy. How green it's looking. This is a lactarius. So if I damage these gills, I should uh, lactate. This one's a little bit old, so milk might not come out of it. But see that greenish color? That is like one of the most disgusting looking mushrooms to me. But this is actually called Lactarius deliciosus. So edible mushroom. But they just look hideous to me, man. They do not look tasty. A Copernellus atramentaria. So these actually contain, they're known as the alcohol inky cap. And you can eat these, they're totally edible as long as you don't drink alcohol. These are really thick. And, uh, but if you do drink alcohol, it's got um, a chemical in it uh, known as coprine. Yeah, it's what they use in an abuse for like severely alcoholic people that try to get them to quit drinking alcohol. Make you severely sick if you drink alcohol and eat these within a week of each other. So yeah, the uh, alcohol inky caps, really cool. What a beautiful scene. We basically went all the way around this basin right here. We hit all these little patches of trees and then walked along inside this tree line. One thing is that I noticed a lot of mushrooms that were flipped over. So all the people that are camping over here, probably here for Mushroom Fest, and they've done similar things. They wanna go foraging around their camp spot. So the lack of chanterelles or the good edible ones uh, is probably to account for that other people already found them. But still, there's just thousands of mushrooms out there. Fun to look at. After we went foraging and got soaked, we were able to change and the clouds cleared and the rain stopped. It was time to head back into town for more festivities at the Mushroom Festival. Telluride was happening in the afternoon. Restaurants were overflowing out onto the sidewalks, mountain bikes and longboards. There was even a small farmer's market right in town offering fresh produce for sale. We decided to check out some of the booths that were here for the festival. We started at Dirt Druid Pottery. Here they had all kinds of cool pottery that were mushroom themed. My wife really fell in love with one of the mugs that had a little group of chanterelles growing on the side of it. Welcome to Mushroom. This is a really awesome place where we sell a growing supply and we also have our own awesome line of tinctures. We even have a autoclave that we are selling as well. We can hold about 300 pounds of grain in here. Super fun. And uh, yeah, that's it. The next tent we went to was called Pugod, Colorado. These were super cool guys that were into making substrate for growing manure-loving mushrooms like Psilocybe cubensis. They had everything you needed to get started and you can contact them online at Pugod, Colorado. We ended off the night going to the Palms Theater at the local high school for a lecture given by Bryn Dentinger. He's a keynote presenter and a curator of mycology and professor of biology. He was given an amazing talk about psilocybin mushrooms and their history and where they came from and their genetic code. That night the clouds cleared out and the sky opened up over Priest Lake, revealing the most amazing scene of the Milky Way I've ever seen. We slept good that night and the next morning, fresh coffee and a nice fire to warm us up. It's Saturday. Uh, it's probably the biggest day of the festival. So today is gonna be the parade. We were finding so many mushrooms yesterday. We're gonna go out again here after a little coffee and breakfast. And during that talk last night, he said, psilocybin evolved into mushrooms 65 million years ago. So way before humans, uh, mushrooms were containing psilocybin. And, uh, and so it definitely doesn't have anything to do with us. We'd like uh, to think it does though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not. It doesn't hurt to, to be uh, spreading. I mean, the survival rate of Psilocybe cubensis has like just gone up exponentially since humans have discovered and started using them and cultivating them, especially. What a 
amazing survival tactic for a, for a mushroom, but it seems to just happen by mistake. I've noticed a lot of people are barefoot. A lot of barefooted people here in Telluride, yeah. Lots of dogs. Lots of dogs. We ran into a bear almost. Uh, it was just like 30 feet off the trail. Yeah. That was really unexpected and wild. That was super cool. Yeah, I've never seen a, a brown bear in the wild. I've seen black bear, but never. A big grizzly bear yeah. just it's hanging huge. out. It was huge, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. So we rode the gondola up and met with Larry Evans foraging foray and uh, and did that and then we walked all the way down. So I'm, my legs are still yeah, kind of tired. Sore. Yeah, we've been doing quite a bit of uh, mushroom hiking around here, but we're not done yet. I, I still I keep thinking about these shrimp rustles that grow around here. They're just red as the most beautiful red apple you've ever seen. And then I did that nibble and spit test yesterday and it was totally mild. And uh, those would be really good to eat. Yeah, just getting the day going. Got some amazing shots of the Milky Way behind our tent last night and uh, excited to start day five of our journey. The parade is this afternoon from four to seven. Beautiful way to start the day. It's a little bit overcast here. Sun's trying to come out. All my kids say so anyways, but they don't really know that. All right, here we go, camp breakfast. Not bad. So we just had our coffee and our breakfast and cleaned up all of our dishes and our camp, got all the food put away because there are bears around here, we've confirmed that. And we've got our handy little foraging bags on. We'll take some bottled water. And I got this cool little mushroom knife, gather Americana. So it's got a little brush and a little knife, you know, pretty typical mushroom gathering knife. Here are these beautiful russulas. Look at that. Good find Kaya. Amanita muscaria. So this is your ever popular Mario mushroom. How pretty. It's got the reddest red of all the mushrooms out here. No wonder it's so iconic. It just really catches your eye. And let me get underneath here to show you. Good example of one. Beautiful. Right down here, this low part is called the vulva. And it's got this partial veil, it's a yellow thing right by my thumb. And, uh, and the cap has those white spots. That's the leftover remnants of that part. So, um, a lot of people use these as a type of psychotropic drug. They're not psychoactive in the sense that a psilocybe mushroom is. More woodier quite a bit of it on this log. Again, a good edible. We found some of these on Larry's foray yesterday. We're gonna leave those. I have a bunch of them actually in the truck, so. Where are you from? London. London? Yeah. You're a mycologist? I have an interest in mycology. I'm from the mm -hmm. London Fungus Network, so here just learning, making connections. Cool, yeah. my name's Aaron. Aaron. I'm from uh, Seattle. Oh, cool. What organization are you with? Let me give you my card. Cool. Are you going to collect these uh, these beautiful hedgehog here? Uh, I've got a couple of the bags. The thing is, I'm camping. I ain't got like facilities to, oh, to cook cooking them up. Of them or store them, you know what I mean? You see that? Look at those beautiful yeah, teeth I've under got there. A few for like breakfast. And that's it. And right there. Nice find, man. There are so many mushrooms here. Yeah, I know, like. You know, yeah. like you just wandering way off the beaten path in the woods and just stumble across other mycologists out here in the forest. How cool is that? Came all the way to Telluride for this festival. It just goes to show you how big of a deal this is. One of the most iconic parts of the Telluride Mushroom Festival has to be the parade. 
The city shuts down Main Street while thousands of people eagerly await the excitement of the parade and all of its flair. The Mushroom Mobile, an old Datsun pickup, was unloaded somewhat clumsily off of a flatbed truck at the crest of West Colorado Avenue. Elks Park was full of festival goers, working on poetry, buying various merchandise, and making homemade costumes to represent their addition to the mycomania about to ensue. The city marshal was there to make sure the street remained unblocked. Everyone from elderly folks to young children lined the street sides and sat on the curbs for an hour before the parade started. Did you ever think that this would turn into this? No. Yeah. We started in Aspen in 1975. Okay. And but they didn't like talking about psychedelics. Uh, <laughs> so we split off and yep. Barry stayed in Aspen with the doctors uh, and Manny came here. He wanted more than the... But then it was awesome. one year in... Um, Gothic. Go just one year or two? Just one year well, yeah, yeah, right. 1980 in And Gothic. then someone said, you guys should check out Telluride. <laughs> so what do you what do you hope for the future of the Mushroom Festival? Oh, I think it's just blossoming. It erupting, is, yeah. Erupting like the chanterelles here. The future is now. The future is now, huh? Has it ever been this big? I think it's about the biggest. Gotta hug this lady here. <laughs> she was one of the ones who helped me save this festival. Oh, good. I've done it without her. I know. I'm Spreading the, the only person who's been to all of them. Really? Yeah. I have this great picture of John Sir Jesse with a pile of chanterelles with this grin on his face. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And you know, my favorite picture in the in the Fungi Gary Lincoff edition was the one you took to Gary on my patio, probably holding your drink. Two drinks, because, yeah. Because you were sitting there and you said, oh, I got to get, here, hold this. <laughs> you know, I love that picture. So this is Gary Lincoff. Yeah, that's like the Gary Lincoln. The starter of the and on the other side is Manny Sauls. He's the okay. founder. Okay. He's the one who brought Gary to Colorado. Gotcha. So he really okay. was the one. Did he invite you or were you guys yeah, together? I was, I was the only mycologist in Denver. Yeah, yeah, time. right, right. So Manny had me come to teach classes yeah. at that point. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Very cool. Very cool, thanks. The parade started promptly at 4 p.m. with a chant heard ringing through the streets that proclaimed, We Love Mushrooms. Probably a bizarre homage to people who don't understand, but it certainly excited the parade goers. People showed their enthusiasm as the crowd chanted their way down Main Street, some dressed as mushrooms or donning some type of mushroom apparel, while others simply carried real mushrooms with them. Art Good Times led the parade, one of the festival's most outstanding personalities. As the crowd passed by, most of the onlookers got to their feet and followed as the procession went down the road, making the parade seethe and swell as it headed down the hill. The end of the parade culminated in about a thousand souls entering the town park through various trails where there was a drum circle with an electric intensity. didn't slow people down. In fact, it added an element that helped lend to the carefree attitude of the crowd. All in all, the parade was more than I had ever imagined and it was one of the greatest memories I will take away from here. I had an absolutely amazing time at the Telluride Mushroom Festival Parade, the definite highlight of the weekend. Thanks for joining us on
Mushroom Wonderland. Much love, everyone.